The hypersonic missile the U.S. just launched here is called the Dark Eagle, and it's the most powerful non-nuclear missile the U.S. military has ever produced. Officially known as the Long Range Hypersonic Weapon, or LRHW, it has as close to a real-life wonder weapon as one can imagine. This might come as a surprise since, at first glance, it looks rather, well, ordinary. Each Dark Eagle battery comprises four Transporter Erector Launchers, or TELs. Each housed two missile canisters on board a specifically modified M98A4 tractor truck hauling an M870A4 semi-trailer. As part of the battery, there's a battery operations center that helps coordinate fires and targeting information for individual launchers. Rounding out the setup is a battery support vehicle, but while this setup might resemble a standard Patriot battery, the missiles that come out of these launchers are something the world has never seen before due to their incredible speed. According to the literal scientific definition, hypersonic speed is anything that is five times the speed of sound, or Mach 5. This equates to something moving at least 3,800 miles per hour. That is incredibly fast considering the average speed of a 5.56 millimeter bullet. The rifle round used by the US and NATO travels at roughly 2,500 miles per hour. That means any missile that can reach hypersonic speeds is quite literally faster than a speeding bullet. But the Dark Eagle is much faster than that. According to unverified reports, the Army can make this 16,300-pound missile reach speeds of Mach 17 at a minimum range of 1,725 miles, though the actual range is surely much more. This was achieved through some pretty amazing technology that sounds like it came straight out of a cheap sci-fi novel. After the Battery Operations Center gives the order to fire, the corresponding TEL launches the Dark Eagle. At that moment, the first stage rocket motor kicks in. Though the exact operating parameters are classified, the rocket motor produces enough energy to reach an altitude of about 100 to 150 kilometers above the Earth's surface. At this altitude, the Dark Eagle is technically in space after passing the 100-kilometer Kármán line. During this part, known as the boost phase, the Dark Eagle uses a system called thrust vector control to make course corrections. This system makes the missile's actual rear end move in flight to prepare it for the next phase, the mid-course. As the first stage rocket motor runs out of fuel, it detaches from the Dark Eagle. This signals the second stage rocket motor to kick in. After it does so, the second stage motor is what makes the Dark Eagle accelerate into hypersonic speeds above Mach 5 as it continues to climb in altitude around 200 to 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface, much higher than even ICBMs travel. Once it reaches the top of its trajectory known as the apogee, the second stage motor separates and this is where the real fun begins. After the second stage, the motor falls off, and the only part left of the Dark Eagle is the business end, known as the Common Hypersonic Glide Body, or CHBG. The CHBG is the actual destruction mechanism of the missile and is much different than any run-of-the-mill missile. In fact, at least for now, the CHGB does not even have an explosive warhead. Rather, the intent is to use the massive kinetic energy built up as the vehicle descends several hundred kilometers from space to annihilate anything it touches. The concept is exactly the same as the fictional Rods from God that envisioned 30-foot tungsten rods raining hellfire down on the Soviet Union. Except now, it's real. As the CHGB turns over, it encounters incredible heat as it re-enters the atmosphere. At temperatures up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, this would melt just about any ordinary warhead. That's why it's made out of specially designed heat-resistant ceramics like zirconium diboride and hafnium diboride with melting points above 3,500 degrees. During this time, the Dark Eagle continues to gain speed with the help of the Earth's gravity, reaching the rumored top speed of Mach 17. But its incredible speed is not the only thing that makes this missile so scary to be on the receiving end. Unlike conventional long-range missiles that follow a rather predictable arc, the Dark Eagle does the exact opposite. 
As it plummets toward the ground, it will change its position, making it hard to shoot down. It can change its altitude, move side to side, and even zigzag thanks to the small fins on the glide vehicle. Finally, as it nears its terminal phase of flight, the glide vehicle enters a near vertical descent to smash into the target. For these reasons, the Dark Eagle is virtually impossible to shoot down, even if air defense radars could even track it. For these reasons, the Army and Navy have been jointly working on this project for years for rollout on Army ground launchers and on board the Navy's Zumalt class destroyers and Virginia class submarines. The reason for this cooperation is because Chinese defenses in the Pacific grow stronger each day, and both services need to clear the huge hurdle to defeat China in a stand-up fight. Since early 2013, China has been actively building up its presence in the South China Sea and along its eastern borders to create a literal missile wall to keep the U.S. Navy at arm's length. How they have done this is through the most aggressive missile development program in the world. The Chinese People's Liberation Army currently possesses the world's largest inventory of ballistic and cruise missiles. Among these thousands of missiles are a few types that stick out. These include roughly 170 intercontinental ballistic missiles with ranges up to 15,000 kilometers at bases in Gansu, Xinjiang, Hunan, Yunnan, and Shanxi provinces. In addition to these, the Chinese military has roughly 250 hypersonic DF-26 missiles with a 4,000-kilometer range at sites in Guangdong, Yunnan, and Xinjiang provinces. For threats closer to China, the PLA has roughly 148 medium-range ballistic missiles, including the vaunted DF-17, in places like Henan, Jiangxi, and Zhejiang provinces. And this figure does not include just over 1,000 short-range ballistic and cruise missiles stationed throughout the country but concentrated along the coast. With this massive arsenal of missiles, in the event of war, the Chinese military hopes to push the U.S. Navy out of the first island chain that encompasses the various island chains in the South China Sea and even past the second island chain, which includes countries like Japan and the Philippines. Though the U.S. and its allies have at least several hundred interceptors among its ground and naval units in the region at any given time, two of these Chinese missiles give the U.S. Navy a reason to be concerned. The first of these is the DF-26. The DF-26, known as the Guam Killer or Carrier Killer, is China's go-to choice for preemptive strikes. With the ability to have another 5 to 10 kiloton tactical nuclear warhead or an 1800 kilogram conventional payload, the DF-26 can travel at speeds between Mach 10 to Mach 12. Though the DF-26 follows a rather predictable arc, its hypersonic speed makes it very hard to track, much less shoot down. And despite the ominous name, another missile is much scarier than this. The DF-17 is China's most advanced non-nuclear weapon. Effectively, the Chinese equivalent to the Dark Eagle, the DF-17 has been in service since around 2019 and has an estimated speed of between Mach 5 and Mach 10, just like the Dark Eagle. The DF-17 is a hypersonic glide vehicle propelled high into the atmosphere or low to the ground for conventional strikes on high-value targets. With roughly 48 of these launchers along the Chinese coastline, this is the highest priority threat facing the U.S. Navy in a total war scenario. However, despite not having a fully operational hypersonic missile yet, the U.S. Navy is not taking lumps lying down from China thanks to its active defense of this threat. Because Aegis-equipped ships have a limited range of around 200 nautical miles, they cannot organically see targets past that range. That's why the Navy has been working with the Air Force and Missile Defense Agency to bolster the Sea Service's capability to detect and shoot down hypersonic threats. In this example, we can see how the Chinese conducted a volley fire of several DF-17s towards an American carrier strike group in the South China Sea. As soon as China fires the DF-17, special satellites called hypersonic ballistic and tracking sensors can detect the heat signatures from this launch. 
The satellites then relay this information to the Missile Defense Agency's Overhead Persistent Architecture, or BOA, to configure the data into usable targeting information and consolidate it with other sensors. Then, the BOA sends this information in real time via satellite communications to the Aegis Firing Unit. Although the ship has just a 200 nautical mile limitation on SPY, thanks to the information from BOA, Aegis can now get a targeting solution on the incoming DF-17 missiles and fire a glide phase interceptor back at it. The glide phase interceptor is a specifically modified missile designed to attack hypersonic glide vehicles during its glide phase before it transitions into a steep dive in its terminal phase. As the glide base interceptor destroys the first DF-17, the second DF-17 comes into range of the ship's own sensors. Using internal targeting data, the ship can relay this to the second interceptor to destroy the next missile. Finally, the ship can now also receive targeting data from a friendly Aegis-equipped ship to help fill in any blind spots to destroy the last DF-17 with an SM-6 in its terminal phase. Although this scenario is where the Navy would like to be in the future, the glide-based interceptor is currently in development right now. Because of this, the Navy has been working with partner nations in Asia to build a counter-strike capability to destroy these missiles before they even take off. Publicly confirmed measures so far include stationing the first operational Dark Eagle battery in Guam and posting short-based SM-6 batteries in the Philippines to cover the South China Sea. Additionally, media reports have leaked that the U.S. is currently in secret talks with Japan to station Dark Eagle missiles at the Kanita Air Base in Okinawa. Despite this massive buildup, in 2023, President Xi Jinping told the world that his military would take back Taiwan by 2027. If he follows through on this promise, here's how the Dark Eagle would stop him in his tracks. If Xi's invasion of Taiwan really kicks off, U.S. and Taiwanese forces in the region are in for a rude awakening. According to the most prominent theories, the Chinese intend to launch a massive missile barrage of almost every conventional weapon they have. The hope is this barrage will destroy the U.S. and allied air bases, logistics bases, naval installations, and command and control centers. Chief among these threats will be the DF-17 and DF-26 missiles. As these missiles are raining down, the Chinese military will launch the largest amphibious invasion since World War II with the goal to land about 75,000 troops in the first day, with up to 400,000 more in the following week. To carry out this operation, the Chinese would need to neutralize the U.S. Navy so there would be no troop redeployments from places like South Korea, Okinawa, or mainland Japan to reinforce Taiwan. This is where the Dark Eagle steps in. According to publicly confirmed data, the Army intends to purchase 64 Dark Eagle missiles. This includes 18 test missiles and 48 operational ones spread across six batteries. The Navy intends to arm each Zumwalt-class destroyer with 12 conventional prompt strike missiles, as Dark Eagles are called in the Navy, and an undisclosed number of its Virginia-class submarines. However, if the U.S. fired its entire confirmed arsenal of 84 Dark Eagles, this would cause devastating damage to the Chinese. When launching these missiles, the U.S. could choose two types of fire, volley fire or precision strike. The difference between the two is basically the amount of missiles fired for each target. For example, the U.S. would surely use a volley strike against DF-17 and DF-26 bases in eastern China to destroy these weapons before the Chinese could fire them on U.S. forces. As these strikes are going on, U.S. forces will also be targeting CCP command and control centers in places like Beijing, this is where the Dark Eagles on Okinawa will work their magic. The Dark Eagle would take just eight minutes to get from Kaneda Air Base to Beijing, a distance of around 2,775 kilometers. If the Dark Eagle were able to successfully avoid interception, a strike like this would throw the inexperienced, centralized Chinese military into complete disarray, leaving them unclear of what to do next. 
After that, the massive numbers of Chinese troops and equipment would be little more than extra practice in the now target-rich environment of the Taiwan Strait. Do you think China has anything that can actually counter the Dark Eagle? Bye for now.